Have you ever heard the expression short pushes long? This is often used in reference to bobs. How the short hair on a bob tends to push up the longer hair and support it. But it also applies to the individual hair strand. When you use tools like shears, and I did a video on this, as you close the shears, they, they push that hair strand away from the closing just the littlest bit so that one side of your hair strand ends up a little bit longer than the other side of the hair strand. You take this little tiny difference and multiply it by 100,000, you have a haircut that tends to go one way. Once again, with your bob example, if you've ever cut a bob, she didn't take very long to get ready. And you've noticed that it tends to move forward and even flip under the face on one side, but then flip out on the other. It may be because you started with your shears on one side and worked your way all the way around to the other. Cutting back away from the face is going to cause that hair to flip out just a little bit. And then cutting toward the face is going to cause that hair to flip under or move toward the face a little bit. That's why you'll see super precision bobs that are cut with shears start from the back because we want to get longer in the front and they'll move toward the front. Then you flip your shears around this way or this way and then cut toward the front. So on both sides were cut toward the front and that hair has a tendency to curl toward the face because the short side of the hair pushes that long side. Now on the other side of the spectrum, you've got clippers. When you cut with clippers, You've got that moving blade that moves hundreds, if not thousands of times a minute. That hair is cut so blunt that it doesn't favor one direction over another. But on the other side of the coin, we've got razor. And when razor technique is applied properly, that short side of the hair can be drastically shorter than that long side of the hair. The advantage that this gives us is that you can control the direction that that hair moves in your haircut more with a razor than with any other tool. If we follow that progression of short pushes long, the angle that we hold our razor while we're cutting is going to affect the haircut more so than with either of these tools. That's something to keep in mind. Which brings me to my first myth. The razors are not for curly hair. As a matter of fact, razors are like tailor made for curly hair. Curly hair has more direction than straight hair. You will notice that a lot of curly hair specialty cutting techniques like uh, Mazzani's air cut or the Diva cut never cut blunt straight lines. Instead, they're always using some slide cutting motions and some scooping motions because not only can we control the direction of the hair, if we're cutting a section of hair on a diagonal through that section, we're going to allow curls to form more naturally and tuck in with each other if we grab them section by section. That's a lot of what the Diva Cut is based on. You get curls that play well together and you allow them to continue to play well together. You get groups of curls that aren't playing well together, well then don't try to make them. Leave them separate and cut them on their own. If slide cutting can enhance the hair's natural texture and allow groups of ringlets to play well together, well then a razor cut can do it, a proper razor cut can do it even better. An improper razor cut, just like an improper scissor cut, can also ruin hair. Luckily, it's a renewable resource, and if that's ever happened to you, hair grows back. But when we, we can't talk about curls without talking about different types of curls either. So for instance, oof, she's been on the shelf too long. She needs some help. I have Alicia and Annabelle here. Both of them have the type of curls that will break into ringlets and can benefit from a razor cut, allowing those curls to tuck in well with each other. Now when we talk about, let's say Cameron here, his hair is right on the verge. With the proper styling and techniques, his hair might want to go into ringlets, but it doesn't tend to. When we're talking about what some people would call like 4C hair, where it, the coils aren't necessarily uniform, and often when you're cutting, you're cutting a silhouette rather than trying to enhance the curl because the curls are so tight. In that case, I would not use a razor. The hair wouldn't benefit from that. 
a blunter cut on the end is actually going to help your silhouette rather than a more tapered end. We're saving Cameron for another day. So when it comes to curl types, anything from straight hair, if you want the ends to feel more wispy, to curly hair, if you want to enhance the curl and actually help it come to life, the razor can be an optimal tool. But what about hair diameter, fine, medium, or coarse? Some people have really skinny strands of hair, to like your more medium, if that's really a thing, and coarse. What these are describing is really the interplay between the two, the two main layers of the hair, the cortex and the cuticle. With your finer hair, though the diameter is very, very small, it can often be up to 50% cuticle, which means it's got a lot of cuticle layer in proportion to the cortex layer. What does this mean? The cortex is the part of the hair that absorbs water. It's the stretchy part of hair. It's the hair that responds to hot tools, like when you want to curl the hair. It's the part of the hair that actually curls. The cuticle is those shiny overlapping layers. Like I've shown in my models before, this cuticle layer is hard like your fingernails. This doesn't take heat styling and it's very hard and can be considered fragile. So when it comes to cutting fine hair with a razor, my only rule is that I need to be gentle with it. So I need to make sure that the subsections I take are smaller than I would normally take and allow the razor to do its job. And we'll talk about this in the actual hair cutting video, but I'm not gonna try to put a lot of pressure on it or get through that section quick. You really wanna let the razor do the job for you. Then there's medium hair and on the other end of the spectrum, coarse hair. Coarse hair is the largest in diameter hair. And even though it may be 90% cortex, it could still have, it still has many more cuticle layers than the fine hair. The fine hair I talked about before, Yes, it's 50% cuticle, but there may be only six layers of cuticle on top of one another. Whereas with coarse hair, it could be only 10% cuticle, but there could be a dozen layers of cuticle overlapping one another. So that means once again, we need to be gentle. We need to use proper razor technique and not try to force the razor through the hair. Razor cutting is very much like sculpting. You get a lot of physical feedback when that razor touches the hair. So depending on the hair diameter and the hair's curl pattern, you're going to slightly adjust your pressure and adjust your razor angle based on the physical feedback that you're getting from the hair through the razor. It's a very sensory way of cutting. It's one of the reasons I love it. It's the most like sculpture than any, than any other hair cutting technique. When I was in cosmetology school, we weren't allowed to say haircut. We had to say hair sculpture. And it really kind of confused the clients sometimes. <laughs> They'd come in and we'd say, how would you like your hair sculpted? And they'd go, oh, no, no, I didn't come for an updo. I came for a haircut. And we'd be like, yeah, I know. What I mean is hair is haircut, but we have to say sculpture. But if anything feels more like sculpture, it's that razor cut. So who's the razor cut for? I was told to avoid fine hair. I was also told to avoid coarse hair. And for my last point, wet or dry. Though the outer layer of the cuticle is hard and isn't as effective by, by water, the cortex swells, it's like a sponge, and it absorbs a good amount of water. When hair is dry, it stretches by about 20%. When it's wet, it can stretch by up to 50%, which means it's a lot more pliable and a lot more forgiving. I prefer to razor cut hair completely wet. I want to make sure that that hair is saturated with water, that I can get good tension on it, but I've got that little bit of extra stretchiness and forgiveness in the hair just as a buffer. Some people only cut hair with a razor dry. That's a thing, and I'm not gonna say it's wrong, but I don't personally do it. The only time I would cut hair with a razor dry is when extensions are involved. Whether they're human hair or synthetic hair, even if you have 100% human hair extensions, in your head, it's not your hair. So that hair texture is gonna be a little bit different from yours and have a little bit more stretch. Once you get it wet, that difference is pronounced and you can get wavy lines or some, perhaps some bad results by cutting hair wet while the extensions are in it. So in that case, dry the hair in a neutral style, take very fine sections and dry cut the extensions to blend them into the natural hair. All diameters, many textures, and almost always saturated with water. I hope you join me next time when we give Erica a pixie cut. See you then. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. 
If you like what you saw and you want to see some more, go ahead and check out some of my other videos. Feel free to share with any of your nerdy friends. Click the subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Let me know what else you want to hear about. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you next time.